optimization in several variables. So far we had functions in one variable. Now we are moving on with function in two, three variables. Let us begin by some definitions. A function of two variables has a local maximum. So please pay attention to the local at point A and B if Z values are less than equals to the Z at point A and B. And we are looking at nearby points. This means that f of x and y is less than or equals to f of a and b for all points a and b in some disk with center a and b. This number is called a local maximum value of the function. With the same definition, we can define the local minimum. So if every z value is more than or equals to z at point a and b, then we have a local minimum at the point a and b and that z value is called the local minimum value of the function visually you can take a look at this nearby this point we have a local minimum and we have two local maximum if the inequalities in the definition hold for all points in the domain then we have absolute maximum and absolute minimum. Please note that if f has a local maximum or local minimum, and if the first order partial derivatives of f exist, then the partial derivatives at the point must be equal to zero. You're basically looking at that the rate of change of the function in the direction of x-axis in the direction of y-axis. Both of them are equal to zero and as we discuss this for a function in one variable we define partial derivatives and using them to define the critical point an interior point like a and b in the domain of the function is called the critical point if either both partial derivatives at a and b are equal to zero or at least one of them doesn't exist Let's take a look at this function, x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 6y plus 10. You can visually take a look at this function, which is similar to a ball. To find the critical values, we take the partial derivative with respect to x. It means that y acts like a constant. So when y is equal to constant, the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 0. The derivative of negative 2x is negative 2. The derivative of negative 6y is 0. The derivative of 10 is equal to 0. Take the partial derivative with respect to y. It means that x act like a constant. When x act like the constant, it means that x squared derivative is 0, y squared is 2y, and so. Now, to find the uh, critical point, we set the partial derivatives equal to 0. 2x minus 2 is equal to 0, so x becomes 1, as you can see here, and 2y minus 6 is equal to 0, so y becomes 3, which is just right here. Now, to find the z value, you can basically plug that into the function, or you can complete the square if you feel comfortable doing that. To complete the square, as you remember, here you have x squared minus 2x plus 1, then you copy down y squared minus 6y plus 9. If you group these two together, it is x minus 1 to the second. And if you group these two together, you get y minus 3 to the second. And when you plug in 1 and 3, this becomes just 0. So here you have the minimum value of your function. As easy as that. As we introduced inflection points in function in one variable, those are the points that the function changes concavity, like this case, x cubed. The function concave down, then the function starts concaving up. So you have inflection point. 
We have the same thing for a function in two variables. We call it a saddle point. Consider a function f that is differentiable at a critical point a and b. So first we find a critical point. There's no doubt there. Then f has a saddle point at a and b if in every open disk centered at the point a and b, you can find some points like x and y such that the z is more than z at a and b and you can find points that z is less than z at a and b. Those are called saddle points. So it doesn't matter how close you get to that point, you still can find some functions with these z values more than or less than the z at a and b. Those are called saddle points. And as we had the second derivative test for function in one variable, we have the second derivative test for function of two variables. Suppose the second partial derivatives of f are continuous on a disk center at a and b, and suppose partial derivative of f with respect to x and partial derivative of f with respect to y at point a and b are zero. What's the meaning of that? It means that a and b is a critical point of the function. We're going to define something that we call the discriminant. d at a and b is the second partial derivative of f with respect to x times the second partial derivative of f with respect to y at a and b minus the second partial derivative of f with respect to x, y at a and b raised to second power. Then we're going to use these to decide on the function having a maximum or minimum at the critical point A and B. If D or the discriminant is positive, second partial derivative of F with respect to X is also positive, then you're going to say that, hey, we have a local minimum. If the discriminant is positive, and the second partial derivative of f with respect to x is negative, then you have a local maximum. If d is negative, then this is not a local maximum or minimum. In case c, the point a and b, as we talked, is a saddle point. If d is equal to zero, it means that this test is inconclusive. It means that we need to use the points that are nearby that point and manually check to see if we have a maximum or minimum. And to find the formula and remember it, you can always remember the determinant. The determinant in this case is the discriminant or the Hessian is the determinant of the first, second partial derivative of f with respect to x, second partial derivative of f with respect to x and y, the second partial derivative of f with respect to y and x, the second partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is by using the definition of determinant, if you have a matrix a, b, c, d, the determinant is equal to a, d minus b, c. So that's how we find the discriminant of the function. So let us use the second derivative test, which makes our life much more easier. Find the local extreme values of the following function. xy minus x squared minus y squared minus 2x minus 2y plus 4. Partial derivative of f with respect to x is y. The derivative of xy with respect to x is y. The derivative of negative x squared is negative 2x. This is just 0. And the derivative of negative 2x with respect to x is negative 2. Set it equal to 0. Then find the partial derivative of f with respect to y, which is x minus 2y minus 2. Set it equal to 0. When you solve this, x is equal to y, which is equal to negative 2. Remember that you are solving the system not just one of these equations separately. 
So from the first equation, y is equal to 2x plus 2. Substitute that in the second equation. We get x minus 2 times 2x plus 2 minus 2. This must be equal to 0. So you have x minus 4x minus 4 minus 2 equal to 0 or negative 3 minus negative 3x minus 6 is equal to 0. So x becomes negative 2. x is negative 2. y is also negative 2. So that's how you do the algebra. You need to think about this as a system of equations. Therefore, the point negative 2 and negative 2 is the only point where function f may take on an extreme value. So we found a critical value. Let's take the second partial derivative of f with respect to x. We already have the first partial derivative of f with respect to x, which is y minus 2, x minus 2. Then you take the second derivative of f with respect to x, it becomes negative 2. Second partial derivative of f with respect to y gives you negative 2. And partial derivative of f with respect to x was y minus 2x. If you take partial derivative with respect to y, it becomes y. So we have all missing pieces. The discriminant is following the formula f of x and x, f of y and y minus f of x, y to the second is negative 2 times negative 2 minus 1 to the second power, which is 4 minus 1 or 3. So as you can see, the discriminant is positive. And the second partial derivative of f with respect to x is negative. Which case is this? This is the case that you end up with a maximum value. So you're going to have a local maximum at the point negative 2 and negative 2.